McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 12 of this NHL 21 Edmonton Oilers franchise mode here in oil country if you guys are new to the channel and haven't yet make sure you go down below subscribe to the channel if you're new or trying to hit that sub thousand subscriber mark also feel free to drop a like on the video if you enjoy and feel free to leave comments to possibly get featured in the upcoming episodes but before we jump into this episode guys let's go through the comments from the last video there weren't too many of them but here's what we had from the comment section so the first comment, actually, the only two comments that really are getting featured here, both from ACOG Batteries. So thanks, man. I appreciate the comments. That really helps this series keep going. Um, he said, what do you have to, or what do you have your draft class and prospect quality set to? I couldn't resist setting both of mine to high in my sim. Yes, I agree. Um, that is exactly where my settings are too right now, I believe. Pretty sure I have them on high. Yeah, yeah, I have them both on high right there, as you can see. So, uh so yeah yeah I, I couldn't resist either obviously i wanted to uh to see what a high draft class quality and prospect generation looked like and uh yeah it's been pretty awesome so far just to see but i think we'll get to see that more as we get further into this franchise mode too like you look at the draft class here you know it's not the most spectacular as far as potential goes but there's still some really good players in here don't get me wrong so yeah um that's kind of the extent of that comment the other one he said was that second defensive pairing with the plus five is nasty i don't know exactly which one this was i think we changed the system around enough that it doesn't look like that anymore yeah yeah we changed stuff around a bit but you know having piero sabottle and uh ethan bear would yeah that that would be a pretty awesome pair in there and then was it in the ahl maybe no it can't have been actually maybe it was i don't know I can't remember at this point, but uh, yeah, thanks for the comments there, guys. I really appreciate it. Again, this Oilers team is set up for now and the future, which is awesome because it means we should be able to just kind of continue winning here. So we've got our first series coming up here against the Vegas Golden Knights. If this series goes well, we'll get into the next series of the playoffs. If it doesn't, then, uh, then we will kind of cut the video a little bit shorter, probably start the off season maybe get into the draft i'm not entirely sure yet but uh yeah we'll figure it out as we go so guys heading into this series this is actually the first series the oilers will play where they don't have home ice advantage we obviously were able to win the cup last season and uh or not win the cup sorry but make it all the way to the finals last season we're trying to win the cup this year obviously but we were obviously able to make it all the way to the finals and then lost to the red wings in five games yeah yeah, but this is the first series that we play where we don't have home ice advantage. So we'll see how this goes as far as the Oilers can, you know, kind of maintain their structure or not. We'll see what happens. And uh, first period, it's a 1 1 game as Mark Stone and Atu Ratty both get goals. We outshoot them 15 to 8 there in the first. Second period, it's a 3 2 game as Drysaddle and Yamamoto both find the net for Edmonton. And Chekovic scores for the Golden Knights. The Oilers outshoot the Golden Knights 25-12 to at the end of the second. I'm just going to sim right through the third period, and it's a 5-4 win for the Oilers as Yamamoto gets his second of the game. Bouchard adds a tally there, and Carlson scores twice for Vegas as we finish the game actually getting outshot in the third. So Vegas really bounced back there, but we were able to walk away with game one on away ice. That is always a good thing. So heading into game two... We'll see if the Oilers can kind of continue this uh, this power type of offense that they've shown so far. I mean, the defense wasn't really great, but, you know, it happens. Um, and then in the AHL so far, looks like the Condors are really, you know, on a roll there against the Ontario Reign up to nothing. So, game two against Vegas, we start off tied 0-0, getting outshot 10-6. I think the momentum kind of changed at the end of that last game there as uh, Vegas really started applying the pressure offensively so second period it's a one nothing game for vegas and uh not looking so great here for edmonton now obviously you know it is just a one shot game but edmonton's not getting shots that's kind of the thing oh and there we go leon dreisaitl is able to convert on the power play makes it a one one game 
how is this game going to conclude here? What's going to happen? Edmonton's seeming to get more shots, but no shots really for either team here over the last couple of minutes. And by the looks of it, we are going to overtime. All right. So game two overtime. Again, this could go either way. I'm not going to jump in yet. Power play right off the bat for Edmonton, and they don't convert. That's brutal, but they still get the win as Ethan Bear is able to net the OT winner and put the Oilers up 2-0 here in the first round on away ice both games. Ilya Samsonov with the first start of the game there. Not bad, man. I'm really liking how well Edmonton's simming right now. This is looking good. So uh, Dreisaitl, six points in just two games, so that's insane. He's uh, very much carrying the Oilers right now. And let's see how these home ice games go. Can we possibly, I'm not going to say it, because if I say it, we're going to jinx it, but you guys all know what I'm thinking here. Heading back to Rogers Place for the next two games. First period, Vegas is up 1-0 as they outshoot us 13-8. We need to get more shots for sure in the second. Second period, it's a 2-2 game, like I said there. Two power play goals from Dreisaitl and Ratty as we are still getting out shot 21 to 17, but we definitely got the momentum back. Granlin scored for the Golden Knights. So heading into the third period here, let's see what happens. And is this going to change? Is the score going to change at all here? It has to before the end of this game, but tight game for sure still. Vegas gained lots of shots and that converts there as Cody Glass scores. And uh, Edmonton down 3-2 on home ice now. It's not what you like to see, but that's how it's going. And they're just not getting enough shots to win this game by the looks of it. Can they get a late goal? Doesn't look like it. Yeah. And Kavanaugh scores there. I ca Cav Kavanaugh, sorry. Kavanaugh scores there to seal that game. Edmonton kind of just chokes it in the third period and... Uh, Looks like it's going to be the away ice curse this series by the looks of it. If you're the home ice curse, or if you're on home ice, you lose. So, I mean, it would be nice to get a game back here on home ice. We don't want to completely blow our home ice. It isn't even home ice advantage. Vegas has the home ice advantage. But game four, let's see how it goes. First period, down 2-1. Jonathan Marshall so scores twice for Vegas on 14 shots. Vinny Hinestroza gets a power play goal for Edmonton on just nine shots there. Second period, it's a 3-1 game for Vegas as Riley Smith scores. Can Edmonton bounce back? It doesn't look like it, man. I swear there's a home ice curse going in this series. It's kind of weird. But um, let's see if we can change the momentum at all here against Vegas. What's going to happen? And nope, definitely not changing the momentum as we go down 4-1 now. And uh, Dry Settle brings one back, but we're going to have to get two more quick goals here if this is going to change anything. And... It's not looking like it. That's a brutal loss there, again on home ice. So Edmonton drops two games in a row on home ice. It's the home ice curse, I swear. That's what it is. Like That's what's going on right now. And we're just one of two series that doesn't go 3-1 to one there. So let's see. Game 5, this is a very decisive game here. Dreisaitl averaging two points per game, but... We need the win here against Vegas if we're going to advance. So, first period, we're down 3-1. Ouch. Big ouch. Okay, Marshall So Smith and Kavanaugh score. Budai gets a goal for us, but eight shots. Where the hell is the offense? Edmonton's just gone. There's just, McDavid's not scoring at all. Dreisaitl is, but he's the only player scoring. Second period, it's a 6-2 game. Are you serious right now? You know what? Screw this, man. I, I don't care. 6-2. I'm going to play game 6 because this is this is stupid. I'm sorry. Like, it really is. <laughs> the fact that Vegas, with their barely above-average offense, is going to perform that way. Six goals against, like, really? I, that's just... <laughs> that's just ridiculous. Like, come on, man. Come on. Our team should be walking all over this offense. Defense isn't any better. And the goaltending is atrocious. You're kidding. Wow. Okay. God, if we don't beat this team, man, I swear. That's brutal. Okay. Gonna pull the headphones out here. Actually, first things first. Sorry, guys. I'm going to drop this back to All Star because if we're not playing on All Star, I'm not gonna have a chance here. Why is it on Pro Difficult? It should be on All Star. Anyways, it should be on at least All Star. Um, 
And yeah, yeah, we're good to go here. So Dry Settle didn't score at all in that last game. We have to win on home ice here. We're probably gonna get screwed over by the sim again. That's usually how it works here. So first period. Oh, we're actually up 3-2. That's a nice change there. That doesn't normally happen. Okay, so uh, Pugliarvi, Meridi, and Yamamoto score for us. Chekovic and uh, Carlson for the Knights as we outshoot them by just one shot. Second period, it's 3-3. And here we go. Mark Stone scores for Vegas. So we have to uh, we have to get the win here. No question. And we are easily the better team. Jeez. All right, so here we go, guys. And uh, puck drop goes to Dreisaitl. Let's see what we can get done here. Here we go. Yamo's got speed. Big pass into Dreisaitl. No chance. Again, their goaltending just is not good enough to really perform the way they have been so far. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> don't ask me how they've even stayed in this series with our offense and the amount of offense we could produce with this team. But uh, they have, and... No, that's just a good pass and really bad defense from Vegas as, again, their defense is not that good. So, 4-3 game. It's looking really good for Edmonton right about now in game 6 to, you know, bring this series level. That goes in? On Samsonov? Really? You're kidding me, right? Yikes. That's so, like, physically incapable like what that's such a hard one-timer to hit and he just nails it perfectly oh, the mcdavid line always sucks at defense so oh well um that's just how it's gonna go i guess that's cool oh lindholm that was such a nice drop pass and ratty just could not pick the corner on that Man, I thought we were going to get a shorty there. I honestly did. We were all over them. McDavid's on the PK, hey? Well, here's what Connor does. Or doesn't do. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's just McDavid's speed, man. Merkley getting to the right spot there. And shorthanded... I told you we were going to get one, guys, and we somehow managed to pull that off. But um, the guys are just in the right spots. McDavid's speed creates so much space. Like, when I actually can use McDavid properly like that, it's almost impossible for teams to actually stop McDavid offensively. So still a minute and 11 left on that boarding penalty there for Marodi, but we are definitely uh in a better spot oh god piero's a bottle absolutely massive hit and he's got space and it's a two on one and i messed it up <laughs> jeez somebody skate oh nice just give it away right back to the vegas player oh my goodness that was way too close oh my god <laughs> that should easily be a tie game right now Somehow Samsonov keeps the puck out. Jeez. There we go. That's a good face off. Let's just fucking clear that. Ah, bad giveaway. Really bad giveaway. Yikes. You guys want to get scored on, I can tell. Ratty's got speed there. No, it didn't quite beat him there. Oh, good chance. Big rebound. Oh, my goodness. See, that is the difference in goaltending. Samsonov would have, or Samsonov would have that covered. And instead, Montembeau lets a trickly little rebound go right out to Atu Ratty. That's why I just kind of tossed that, because I knew there was a good chance for a rebound. And, yeah, Montembeau's not good enough. This is what's going to burn Vegas in the end, is their goaltending. And uh, two shorthanded goals in a minute, that's brutal. Big win for the Oilers as they take that one 6-5. That's a tight win, my goodness. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that was too close. We got outshot by Vegas for sure, but... Um, <sighs> the heart's 
racing right now. And this is only round one of the playoffs, too, guys. Yikes. Okay. Um. Yeah, that was definitely an eventful game. Dry Seidel, 10 points in six games now. So, yeah, he's definitely on a good pace. But this series goes to seven. If we win it, we would be taking on the San Jose Sharks. If we lose it, we're out, obviously. So all the other series are decided. Florida, Philly, Carolina, Nashville, Colorado, San Jose. We would be, well, Montreal could potentially get through too, but we are most likely the only Canadian team with a really good shot of making it here. So here we go. First period. Down two nothing. Great start, and uh, it's sixteen to five on shots for Vegas. Second period, it's a five one game. Are you kidding me? Vegas has ninety one offense, not even eighty nine, and they're scoring on us all the time. Are you serious, man? Jeez, that's insane. So Edmonton very well might be gone here. Just boom, just like that. That's brutal. Dreisaitl are going to win the faceoff, and then Yamamoto's sleeping. This is why our team's losing the game so badly. Oh, that was a really good play there by Chicharin. Oh, my goodness. I thought he was I thought he scored. I thought he had it there. Oh, cleft bomb. How do you miss that check? Fortunately, Chicharin's actually playing today. Here we go. Yamo draws the trip. Okay. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. You know what? I I might even consider pulling the goalie really early here. If this power play doesn't convert in the first half of it, then we're going to pull the goalie probably. And that's a great start. Yep. Here comes Leon. Going to create some space. Not finding an open guy though. Like we're looking to set up a one-timer kind of shot. McDavid. Okay. Or you're just gonna bounce him like a rag doll. That's cool. And there you go. Leon Drysidel. He's a sniper. That's what he's supposed to do. So uh yeah, I picked that one out. I knew he could hit that shot, and he does. Gets another power play goal in these first round of the playoff season, so. 5-2. Not saying it's a comeback yet, but we are we get the momentum rolling. So, not bad. Just got to keep up the pressure here and uh, create more chances offensively. So, oh, Clef Pump's got some space. Oscar, nice try. Didn't quite work. You can get out of here, Dougie. Nice try. Leon again gonna fire and Montembeau is really not a good goalie. Okay, how did Marcia so keep that over Hinestroza? Like, are you serious? There we go, Leon. Come on, man. They gotta take penalties on that play. Not only that, but the two on one pins, those are a joke. You can't get two guys there that quickly. Come here, Mark. That's my puck. Man, look at the pressure. Like, look at they literally have four guys back all the time. It's lame. Clef bomb. Okay, come on, Montembeau. There's three guys in front of you. And you just read that thing like a book. Come on. It's not accurate. All right. We need another goal here, like ASAP. So, Clef bomb gonna fire through, and it doesn't make it. Too much traffic in the way. Heinen just domes that guy. I think that was Stone. Okay. Here we go. Heinen. Okay, come on, man. Come on. This is brutal. Okay, you can fuck right off. You can fuck right off. That That's going to be a penalty, but their guy holding my guy against the boards for 30 seconds isn't. Stop. Uh, okay, yeah, that's cool. Oh, score on that. It's got to be a goal. That's brutal. So 
The bottle's got space. I'm gonna shoot from a bad angle. Tried to get a rebound out of it, and it just didn't happen. Where are you skating at to, Ratty? Jeez, you're literally a two-way forward, and that's the play you're gonna make? Okay, that's really cool. Get the fuck out of here. Ratty's gone. Can, can we not get a shot blocked for once in our lives? God. God, that's just too many chances. Okay, come on. Dougie Hamilton is not defensively inclined. He's a shitty fucking defenseman. Okay, he, like he's a good offensive defenseman. Don't get me wrong. He puts up points like crazy, but his defensive skills are not there. Okay? Like, just stop it already. Chicharin, ha <laughs> ha, suck it. Vegas, Montembeau is not good, okay? I don't know how many times I'm going to stress this, but we still need two goals. <sighs> God, it's such a fluky goal, too, but Montembeau is awful, so I don't know why we're not doing this more often, honestly. Chicharin draws the trip. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Right back on the power play. This could really swing the momentum here. We are really uh, in the right spot right now, but they're obviously going to clear that. You know. Brown actually picked it up. That's nice. Oh, big move by Pugliarvi. Got absolutely ran over. And now they're going to push up on this, of course. What is that turn, Verana? Grab the puck, you freaking goof. God. Here's the McDavid speed that I was just talking about for creating chances. And there you go. 5-4. This game, this comeback is on. Montembeau should be out of the net by now, and he's not. So, Vegas is going to pay. And, uh, wake up. Las Vegas, you guys very well might get eliminated right here if you, uh, don't change your goals like that's kind of the main thing that they have to do and if they don't it's done <laughs> so 5-4 game we're still down obviously but um we gotta just keep playing our flawless defensive style here and uh create more chances oh there we go ethan bear in the slot kyler yamamoto lots of good chances and we just could not find the back of the net on that one but back-to-back -back goals would have been real nice right there let's go cleft bomb Big speed. Oh my goodness, he got interfered with by his own guy. Oh my goodness, Montembeau did not just make that save. Seriously. Oh, okay, we got the net pulled, man. This is last resort effort here. I lost the face off. Fuck. And Yamo didn't pin his guy, of course. Here comes Dreisaitl. He's got the step. Oh, my goodness. Clef, I'm going to fire. It didn't get through again, of course. And now they're going to just play. Look at this fucking possession. This is so annoying, man. This is the worst part of the gameplay this year. Easily. It's just look at, look at how far back he's skating. Look at how far fucking back he's skating. That's ridiculous, man. Come on. I just got a penalty for interference with eight seconds. We're done. We're done. And it's on a trash bag call by the ref. Hometown. Yeah, am I right? Like, literally. Ratty. Oh, my goodness. They don't even give us a face off either. They literally just blow the horn. They literally ran it for like a second and a half there as well. You suck, Edmonton. I, I forgot to say it, but you suck. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have a half-decent draft pick, I guess. That's brutal. It's a brutal loss because we came back so far, down 5-1, make it 5-4, and then just couldn't convert on anything else. Oh, pain. Champagne without the sham. <laughs>
so yeah anyways that sucked um but that was in very edmonton fashion again we still have yet to really create any kind of playoff hopes for a stanley cup besides the one run where we sucked in the finals so that's probably i don't think that's gonna quite wrap it up we'll probably get through the draft here too but that was just atrocious like <laughs> got no other words for it it was bad and there you guys have it. The Florida Panthers are your Stanley Cup champions, and the Binghamton Devils win the Calder Cup. And for the lottery, Washington moves up to pick one. Columbus loses it, moves down one. And Anaheim moves from five to three. So those have got a sting for a couple teams there. But, uh, you know, not too crazy a draft lottery overall. You know, a lot of teams stay pretty similar to where they were. And uh, Washington's going to get Jonathan Vandenbush. Or Boucher, however you say it. Um, you know, potential for us to trade up for a guy like William Eves. It would be quite a difficult trade to pull off. But at the same time, if we moved a guy like Braddy or somebody for him, it might be worth it. So for retiring players here, guys... Let's take a look. Alex Ovechkin retires just beating out Gretzky's record with 899 goals. That is pretty absurd. My goodness. I mean, one of the goals with this franchise mode would potentially to be to take it all the way until the end of McDavid and Dreisaitl's careers. That would be pretty awesome. But yeah, Ovechkin definitely a big name Hall of Fame retiree there. Breaks the goal scoring record too, of course. Uh, Ryan Miller, 406 wins in his career. Not too shabby. And uh this is looking this is looking alright for a you know franchise mode so far. Um again for progress reports, let's just take a look at the entire team here. Dry settle on a 93, Chitrin up to an 87, so not bad. Samsonov at an 87, or Samsonov at an 87. Ooh, Pulyarvi drops down to a low top six he's still 85 rated but not spectacular there um let's see who else um doesn't look like skinner grew at all but i feel like he did i don't know why hinestroza at an 83 not bad um any other crazy growth merkley went down i'm pretty sure in the system um strimbu up to a 76 so that's pretty decent. 77 on Lambos. Lavoie to 78. Um, who else is a big name here? Andreoff is only 21 and actually looking pretty decent still. So, But Goldobin didn't really grow. That one kind of stings. Uh, Backer definitely did. He's up to a 74 now. Coburn at a 72. So he had a bit of growth. And oh yeah, Kuplin for sure. He's looking real nice with it. Let's see the stats here. So did his offensive awareness go up? Yeah, quite a bit, but it's not like his defensive awareness as we've all seen. Geez, 89. That's insane. Um, Yosefson did not grow. Neither did Bednar really. So yeah, that's kind of the extent of our team here with players growing, you know, a bunch of lower potential guys growing here. Fenton actually did really decent. Um, he put... Oh, Oh my goodness, put up 73 points in just 65 games. Or in 63 games. Yeah, he's looking real nice with it. So, um, yeah, lots of guys growing here in this team for sure. I would say the most growth was actually, yeah, it was Hancock. Jeez. So, didn't even play that much in our team or anything, but just shot up like crazy. Chistov is actually growing quite nicely at this point too. He is 21 already, but... Uh, you know, lots of guys with some decent potential in our system. Not so much in the NHL. McDavid actually had the most kind of growth or change there in his overall rating. I think he went down two ratings, honestly. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's jump into the draft here and see what we can pick up. If we can make some moves. Um, by the looks of it, you know, we don't have too many guys we really need to move. Like Lavoie and those guys I don't want to move. Our picks, on the other hand, those might be something we're looking to move. Is Dreisaitl on an expiring? Yes, he is. That's why. I'm like, why is his value at 50%? Another move we could make is Hinnestroza because he's so highly valued. Again, taking advantage of the broken trade value system. Um, but that's, you know, a possibility for sure. 
And Lambos might actually be in the team this upcoming year. That would be interesting for sure. Um, let's toss our, you know, 20, what is that, like 23rd pick, 22nd pick on the board. Um, and maybe we look to upgrade the top six here. I'm not going to lie. We have Atsu Ratty, who, you know, I don't want to move necessarily, but um, we might have to here, so... That is an option. All right, guys. So I just wanted to show you I've gone through the draft class. We've pinned off players that are going to be around our picks most likely. So um, Eves, again, we're going to try to maybe pull a trade off. That would be pretty awesome if we could. Uh, besides that, you know, we've got a guy down here, Ola Moden, pinch and shoot defenseman. I want to pick him. Um, three year ETA as well. We have Vincent Leray or or Leroy, yeah, Vincent Leroy pinned here. He's an elite goalie, but again, we don't really need him, to be honest. Um, and we don't have picks around there anyway, so that's the other kind of big issue. Um, moving further down, we got a pick around 85, I believe. Um, so I'm looking at wingers in this area. I, we have no scouting reports on any of them, but I've got two wingers here that you know I think could be good. Um just judged on, I, I want to take this La, La Liberte. I have no idea how good he's going to be, but he's around pick 90, so he's going to be at least, I assume, a medium top nine. And, you know, 18, six foot three, big body, probably going to be a two way or power forward, and that's what our team needs right now. So that's what we're looking at there. Just after that, um, another defenseman here that's hopefully going to turn out in Dmitry Zadorov or Zadorov, however you want to say it. Uh, so I think we're going to take him after that and then got another pick here i believe um actually no we don't have anyone pinned around here i mean like yes koski ranta could be good um but I, I don't know i don't know i feel like a lot of the time the scouts kind of sewer us on who's actually going to be good and who's not and we might not even get a shot at koski ranta because he might get drafted um we had this guy, John Beach. Three-year ETA at pick 150. That's, I mean, he is 20, but still, I'm hoping he's low elite. Uh, Heikinen, big body, and, you know, potentially elite as well. Even if he doesn't fit the system, he's, you know, looking all right. And then after that, I don't think we got anything else. I think that's kind of it. So, yeah, we do have one more pick in here at some point. Yes, yes, right around there. So... Yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll send it. We'll see what happens. And, uh, you know, we only really are going to get one shot at this. But, you know, hopefully we can make it count. And hopefully we can pull off a trade. So, let's get into it. So, that's interesting. Okay, so Columbus wants to trade the number two pick. Um, Vancouver wants to trade seven, but... I think we might be able to pull something off here. Not gonna lie, I think I think we could go for William Eves, but but I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be tricky about this. So I don't want to trade Ratty. I don't want to trade any of our top kind of players. I do want to trade Vinny Henestrosa. Reason being, he's at peak value right now. We're not gonna get a better value on him than that. Um, the other guy I'm very intrigued to trade would be Ethan Bear um 26 years old already you know he's got a decent contract for three more years but actually you know instead of trading ethan bear i know this is sad for oilers fans again clef not a not a massive contract he's five million bucks for the next four years but he is already 30 and that's the kind of big thing that we need to look at right and yeah I, I think he might be the option so let's try hinnestroza clef two big names there and then a first rounder in 2026 does that go through if it does i'll take it it's lopsided value no question uh, okay so we're gonna have to toss something else in here let's try let's try a third rounder next year is that gonna go through yes <laughs> let's go we just traded into the top two. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that means we are most likely... Ooh, Clefbaum takes a big hit there. But we're most likely going to take William e William Eves. Yes, that's the guy we're looking at. They're saying we should take McBride. I don't want to take him. 
don't want to take Eves because he put up, you know, fantastic points, 88 points in 66 games. That's pretty, were they both on the, hold up. Oh my God, the Spitfires had two elites. Oh, that's filthy. Oh, wow, I feel bad for everyone else in the OHL. <laughs> Jeez, I bet those guys just absolutely butchered the league. Holy. Anyways, um, Windsor teammates there. That's pretty crazy. But uh, we'll take the winger first, and then we'll grab a defenseman later with because we were able to hold on to a bunch of our picks and stuff, which is really good. So, yeah, um, this is looking real nice right about now. So I would assume Van den Bush goes first. Yes, or however you say his name to the Capitals, and then we are going to go off the board ever so slightly and uh, take a Mark Stone comparison. William Eves might not be the best system fit overall, but he's a power forward either way, and that is what our team's looking for. So, William Eves, welcome to the Oilers. Eee, 78. Probably wasn't the best pick. Let's see. Ah, McBride was 79, but, you know, we're, we're picking the players that we want, right? So that is kind of the main thing. Lambkin would have been nice too, no question, but... That's okay. That's okay. You can't win them all, and I think we did pretty good still here. Um, so let's sim over to pick 21, see what happens, who gets drafted. And I saw a couple higher-rated players. Nakis wasn't bad. Armstrong was good. Mink was nice. Kligger. Kligger? Yeah, Kligger was nice. Uh, Sparks, Brisgalov. Lots of higher-rated players here. Jeez, nice. Nice first round. Again, high, higher um, quality prospects here. So we could take Enroth, who's at the top of the board, but I'm not going to. I'm not even going to take the guaranteed medium top four here because he doesn't fit the system the way I want him to. Instead, we're going to take Ola Moden. He can play both sides on defense, which is a huge upside for our team. Let's see how he turns out. And he is a 67 overall. He is 20 years old, to be fair. But still, um, I really like that he's a big body, able to play more than one position without affecting the chemistry and uh that's a good pick in my opinion too all right guys so simulating over to pick number 85 now we are going to take a look at ooh, elite goalie well let's see how the rest of these picks went i'm not seeing a crazy like boatload of potential here um so far anyways Ooh, low elite oh granado that is a nice pick second round nice chicago that is a that's a bit of a steal honestly Decent low elite. Um, anybody else that was really good in here? Doesn't look like it. Granada was kind of the steal there. That's it's a nice pick. It's a good power forward for sure. Um, Leroy, obviously, we knew was going to be good, but we just didn't want to trade for him. We already got kind of our prized possession from this draft in Eves. Ooh, Stajan was nice too. Oh, Missed out on quite a few low elites, not going to lie, guys. We uh, we could have done better there. So I got two players pinned here. You know, we're not going to take smi Smiles. Yeah, Smiley's, however you say his name, because I don't have – I'm just uh, – I've got the feeling that Laliberte is going to be decent. He put up over a half a point per game. He actually put up better points last year by the looks of it, so – and didn't get drafted, but again, another right winger. We do need to load up on that right side a bit. Um, so yeah, I would not be against taking this guy here over anybody else. Let's uh, blind pick, but let's send it. Simon Laliberte, welcome to the team. And he is, oh, 63, not bad. And he's a sniper. Oh, he's a sniper on the right-handed side, though. That's not, not particularly spectacular. It's not bad, but... Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I'm all right with that pick. So, so far, guys, we haven't picked anybody under the height of six foot two. Um, I would say that's definitely a good thing for the Oilers, especially as, uh, you know, we do have some smaller prospects already. Ooh, Dillman was nice. Um, smiles, or, yeah, Smiles wasn't terrible, but, uh, yeah, decent picks throughout there for sure. Why well, I, I accidentally tapped back when I, you know, put my hand down there, but... The next guy we're going to take here is pretty much a guarantee here, I'd hope. Uh, Dmitry Zadorov, 6'190", big body, good defensive player, hopefully. And yes, he is, uh, 62 overall, low top four, you know, not the best potential, but, uh, you know, good physical, good skating, good shot, good defense. He just has to work on the puck skills and senses to really develop. All right, so simulating over to pick number 117 now. 
Um, any good players? Anything? Did we really get some of the best players in the draft? I guess we did. Um, Daryl Martin actually was not a bad pick there by New Jersey, even though he is low top six, but still. Um, how did the rest of round three go? I guess we were picking near the end of it, right? Yeah. I mean, Moss wasn't bad. Ooh, Moss is actually pretty nice, not going to lie. Pablo Moss. I mean, he's undersized, so that's why he fell a bit in the draft for sure. But um, the next guy we're going to take... I think we were going to shoot a risky shot here um, on a three-year ETA, yeah, right? Uh, what's his name? John Beach. Ah, 20 years old again, so we're picking an older player, but, you know, decent-looking kind of two-way forward, I would assume. That would be his kind of style. And uh, I'm hoping he's low elite, but we'll see what happens here. I'm going to take him, though. So John Beach is a... Oh, 67 overall. I mean, low top six, so not quite the potential we were looking for. But not bad. And he's a playmaker. Not bad. I'll take it. All right. So pretty good pick there, in my opinion, I'd say. And uh, yeah, oh, Hughes was nice. Meyer was nice. My goodness. Okay, so decent potentials on those guys. Um, Anybody else? Not seeing much potential in here. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with our picks there. John Beach is sick. Third rounder at 67 overall. Okay, so next up we got Tuomo Heikinen. Heikinen? Yeah, Heikinen. That's how you say it. If he's a 6'5 offensive defenseman, I'd assume he's defensive. I hope so. Um, but can you imagine a 6'5, 221 offensive defenseman? Even if he doesn't make the NHL. I'm still going to take him just based on the sheer size of this player. So, okay, medium top six, uh, 57. He's a two-way defenseman, so he has some offensive upside too, which is, you know, decent puck skills actually, not bad. Um, That's an interesting build of a player for sure, and a right defenseman too. Tuomo Heikinen, sorry, not Heikinen, Heikinen, 149th overall, not a terrible pick, honestly. So, um, interesting pick for sure. Over to pick number 213. Oh my goodness. Valakete. Valakete? Quete? How do you say? 60 overall. God, that's nice. Oh my goodness, man. Like, actually, what a pick. Oh God, that's such a nice player. I can't even remember. I don't think we had anyone pinned here. And you know what? We haven't taken a goal yet. We've made it through, what, two, four, six, six picks without taking a goalie, which is a surprise for me. So to end off the draft, we're just going to send the best goalie on the board here, I think. Um, what's his name? Marku Barkov. Interesting name, but, uh, you know, send it. We'll see what happens. And, oh, 54 rated start. Okay, not bad. Not too shabby. I'll take it. I'll take it for sure. Um... There's a Piero Zabato goalie there who is terrible. But, uh, yeah, no, Marku Barkov, not a bad player. So, yeah, I mean, overall as a draft, I think the Oilers did pretty good here. You can see our prospects. Um, obviously, those first two picks that we had with pick 2 and 21 are definitely going to make the biggest difference in our team moving forward, I would assume. But, you know, Beach has potential to make the team. Same with Zadarov, same with Laliberte. Um, but, man, a guy like Valakete would have been so nice in the seventh round my goodness carolina you lucky lucky team anyways we're gonna sim through the rest of that i'm extremely happy overall with this draft i think we got a lot of good players here and uh i got no complaints so anyways guys i think that's going to wrap it up uh for this episode we'll just get to the coaches here by the looks of it um, it's funny because it's all just AHL guys that are expiring here too. So yeah, we'll just offer, you know, a couple contracts, get the scouts done, but we're not going to get into the actual players here. looks like all my scouts are actually signed too. So that's not bad. Um, but we will get into signing scouts this off season. We'll get into transitioning over into the new, uh, pinch and shoot kind of system for the Oilers. 
Uh, we have to re-sign Chicharin, Skinner. Dreisaitl's got a contract coming up too. So yeah, as you can see, he just disappears there. Um, so yeah, I need you guys to go down below, leave comments for what you think about, you know, just how the draft went, uh, what we need to do moving forward. Again, we've got some big name players here in the system that are going to be probably a slight issue as far as the team goes. We have Pugliarvi signed up to 8 mil for the next two years, so that's an expensive one. Same with Jakob Verana, except he's long term. We got four years left on him, I think. So yeah, um, definitely some big name players throughout the team that need to be re-signed. And I think... I think overall, you know, we will get William Eves. I don't know if we'll get him into the team this year. I would like to, don't get me wrong, but actually we have to because otherwise he goes back to junior. So yeah, he's going to be in the NHL this upcoming year. We're not gonna sign anybody else here um, just yet. We're going to hold off on that for next episode, but I'm just looking through how our team is looking so far. So yeah, that's kind of the extent of our team. Ooh. Ooh, Samsonov, or Samsonov does not want to resign. That's going to be an issue, and we only have 30 million in cap space too. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think we should be doing here. Um, we definitely have a couple options to move around players as far as RFAs go. We do need to resign Dreisaitl and preferably Samsonov. But, uh, anyways, that's going to wrap it up. If you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you go down below drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps drive and direct traffic towards this video and the series in general also make sure you are subscribed if you haven't yet we're trying to hit that thousand sub goal by the end of the year and i know you guys can hit it and uh that's gonna be it for me i hope you guys enjoyed this is etanius signing out and see ya.